All right, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. So this is the JS core dev team weekly sync and not the JS IPFS um, only. Today is the first call of Q3. Woohoo! Like, uh, we went through another quarter uh, with a lot of great successes, a lot of things done, uh, a lot of things to celebrate. And we are now getting ready for this quarter by working on the OKRs. Oh, cool. Michael is also joining today. Uh, as usual, we will just like go through the normal random, like random, uh, regular updates uh, from everyone on what was done, um, blocked, or what is planned for next week. Um, the only couple, I, I just said, I have a couple of remarks um, to to inform everyone, and one of them is really related with the location of this call. So I moved it to IPFS slash PM, and if you read the description of the issue, um, and if you find are here in this call, you probably already read it, but just to make sure we are all in the same page. Uh, now we have officially three teams meeting here. There's like the JSAPFS, JSAP to peer and JSAPLD. So there's like people that will focus only in one of these projects and not all at the same time. This is to basically increase um, like knowledge transfer to make sure that like, people are really engaged with one of the projects, uh, like dedicate enough time to or the, the required time to each of the projects and just overall to support team growth. Uh, the project has been growing, the needs have been growing and, and this just like makes more sense. Also related is the fact that like peer to peer is spinning off into its own project and so it really helps to have a team dedicated there. And, and yeah, as I said, like first day of Q3, uh, which means we are defining or trying to freeze the OKR as soon as possible. Uh, I pushed some updates there, but I'll leave those updates to my update. So far, so good. Does it make sense to everyone that the call moves uh, from places? Uh, did you check the update? Any question with regards to that? So, okay, I see some heads nodding. Uh, sounds good. Let's go to the updates. Cool, I'll start first. Um, we'll just go to, by the order that is on the crypt path. Basically, my, my focus has been like really uh, just on preparation of the dev meetings next week uh, and Q2 OKRs review slash Q3 uh, prep. By the way, I almost forgot because we always start these meetings super fast. Uh, does anyone volunteer to be the note taker? Would someone like to volunteer to take some notes for especially the questions? Or yeah, I can take that. Sweet, thank you, Jacob. Cool, so yeah, I was just saying like a lot of work on the OKRs part. Uh, we now have lead maintainers for all the modules. Really happy about that. Like there is people that can review OPRs, check the issues and also merge and publish to NPM. Um, I've been doing some review of the JSIPFS.io webpage. So it's the project webpage to inform everyone of like what JSIPFS is and what it gets used for. Uh, I plan to do like a very true review this week so that we can ship it during this month, essentially. And, and yeah, overall, just the usual, a lot of PR reviews and merges. Uh, I believe I'm not blocking anyone, or at least I've been trying to check every issue as fast as possible to not have anyone blocked. Let me know if that is not the case. Any questions for me? Sounds good, okay, everyone uh, is pleased. Alan Shaw shared an update with us today, but he's not coming. You can see his update here. Uh, it's a waterfall of stuff. Um, you can ask questions asynchronously. Um, I'll skip just like reading it out loud because it's very well written here and it points to the right issues and PRs. Let's go next, Jacob. Would you like to share your update with us? Yeah, so last week uh, we worked on getting the new libp2p config updates done. Um, I think those just got merged into JSOP AFS today by Ellen, so those are out. Um, also updated WebRTC. They finally fixed the issue with Node 10, so I've updated that in libp2p um, as well as some stability tests, so we can use get passing builds on Node 10 again. Yay! Um, and then I've got a few private networking pull requests out for review. Um, and pending those, I will also create a few more for JSIPFS um, and uh, JSIPFS repo. Mm -hmm. And then last week also did a lot of uh, Q2 retrospective and, and Q3 OKR stuff. Um, and blocked on the private network. Um, 
PR itself. I saw David approve that. Um, hopefully we can get some feedback from um, Kabuksu on that. And then this week, be working on finalizing OKRs for libp2p um, for Q3, uh, working on merging all the, getting all the private networking stuff merged in, um, looking into some flaky tests that were happening with JSIPFS. Um, I'll probably continue to work on the poll reader issues with corrupted streams. Um, and then I'll also be prepping for a libp2p connection flow presentation next week. And I will probably try to create some documentation, um, readme documentation for that as well um, to put in the libp2p repo or somewhere pertinent. All right, lots of cool stuff. Uh, just a couple of notes from me. One, like since you are looking into WebRTC in Node.js, um, in the past, the WRTC module uh, would seg faults very quickly. Um, and so people would just like default not to use it. Uh, it. It was good for demos, but not anything else. Uh, however, now there is a project that actually uses it to stream video and it works very well. So while you are testing the latest WRTC module uh, to get the tests pass, if you can do some kind of like stress tests, just to make sure like it is kind of like, like reliable or, or at least it doesn't just completely seg faults, uh, it would be super useful because I know that there's a lot of people in the community that want to be back at using it. The other note is like the flaky test on JSPFS that I believe you mentioned is the DHT one, like trying to dial to itself. Um, and so basically JSPFS is just like throwing an error saying like you cannot dial to yourself because you discovered yourself. Okay. Uh, I, I saw that like it was very hard to replicate even on CI. And I believe the reason why it was uh, happening on CI is because like CI uh, shares their network, like shares the host. And so, um, there might be some tests that is using like a already um, generated peer ID. And that's why it sees itself as dialing to itself because it's dialing to the other test runner and, and not. Uh, so, so yeah, like that might be a hard one to, to reproduce and, and to really debug like, given that it happens like one out of them in CI. Um, just have that in mind that for debugging, might, the reason might be just the way the tests are set up. Um, cool. No more questions for me. Do, do people have any other questions for Jacob? Sounds good. Cool. All right. Let's go next. Volker. All right. So um, I work on the graph sync stuff. And I thought I, I'd have discovered a bug, but I was just too stupid to use pulse beams correctly. Um, this took a while. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, still more graphing stuff, kind of writing down things like I want to like do it. So basically, it's, that's also preparation for for Berlin, basically, so we can have a proper in depth discussion about it then. And then I could get a lot of um, implementations of the IPLD format changes from Richard Schneider, which is great, and I'm busy reviewing them and. Like that's super busy, but it's good to see those and I review those. Um, and next week, probably there will be more changes and yeah, of course, uh, graphing stuff. I'm a bit blocked on the IPLD Ethereum stuff because Kumaris isn't really responding. Um, the solution is probably that I will make a pull request that the lead maintainership gets moved from him over to myself. And if he's approving it, that, that should be fine. Um, because I'm, I'm basically, I I'm probably think he agrees that he just doesn't have the time currently. So there's no point of having him being yeah. there. Um, yeah. It's the case where like, it has been even more than four weeks or even more without a response, right? Uh, and you tried by email and by GitHub issues and IRC and, and no response so far. Yeah, well, it's been like, so the email has been a week or something. So, so I'm still like, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's totally fine. It's, so, I, so it's under control. Okay. <laughs> I will figure it out. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like again, yeah. Um, as the tech lead of the project, like you always have the full picture and like you feel like if there is an urgent like bug fix, whatever, uh, you should feel comfortable at just moving things forward. The lead maintainer is more there to support you or like just like augmenting your ability to give feedback to everyone and like to review pull requests and to uh, really like just help 
grow the stability and stability of a project. Like you should not feel uh, completely blocked by not having a response of someone for, for multiple weeks. And yes, like if he is not available to continue assuming the role of lead maintainer and like you can just be the interim real maintainer until he responds back. And like when he gets back, if he is available again, uh, you can can get the keys again. It's not like yeah. that we are kicking out someone. It's just things have to move on. Um, cool. All right. Uh, no questions from me. Any questions for Volker? I don't see any hands. Cool. Let's go next. Hugo. Hi guys. So um, I've been working on the uh, quarter retrospective and planning for the next one. I also went through some models on lead maintainer now. Uh, basically, multi hashing and multi hashing async, and also multi parts. You now, solving organizing all the work I did on the large files. Uh, it was a bit of a mess with all the stuff I did. It uh, was basically a bunch of files of me trying to learn how everything fits together, and now it's pretty. Uh, much more organized and I'm finishing up uh, the CI tests as I uh, discussed with David to make a full circle like adding a big file on a daemon and getting it on the browser from that specific daemon and trying to make like a, a script as, that does it uh, all without human interaction that we can deploy um, to a CI. I uh, also did the full review on the JS IPFS IO with, with Pedro. I don't know if you know Pedro, but it's doing the, the site. Um, I, so I did full review, trying to, uh, to see if we, anything is missing and if we, if we need anything more we, uh, from David or anybody, anybody else. Um, and next, I'll be finishing up the tests and publishing it so you guys can review it uh, and also work through the PRs and issues from the multi hashing and multi parts, and also, of course, planning for the next quarter. Sweet, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for also jumping into TCPFS.io and reviewing the code base. Uh, I think like right now I'm the blocker because there's a lot of copy that I have to write and just like review the illustrations. So that's one of the things I tend to do this week uh, as soon as possible. Um, on the CI test for like large files, and, and by the way, everyone, when we say large files, we're thinking about like hundreds of gigs uh, and above. Um, are you like, just to be sure, like we are not necessarily adding those tests as the test suite. Like we are not going to have 100 gigs every single time CI yeah, needs run, right? Like it's, it's separate. It's com it, it will be a completely completely separate. Uh, I'll probably just make a new repo so you can review it, and then we'll figure out how to integrate it on Jenkins or whatever, like running it once a week or whatever. Uh, one question about the um, uh, the JS IPFS IO. We are kind of blocked on the. Um, on the contrib contributors uh, module, mm -hmm. uh, I think Pedro did uh, like uh, open an issue on on the the repo from that thing um, because it basically does work right now. I'm not completely uh, sure what's what's happening, but uh, it's getting no response from the issue on GitHub, and we are kind of seeing are we going to use that or are we going to try to rebuild rebuild it or just bug fixing it. So if you can go check the issue he curated, I'll send you a link or whatever. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, if you send me the link, that's perfect. Um, like it should, like, rebuild it, I don't think there's necessity for that because yeah, yeah. it's very simple. It's just like assessing the GitHub API, getting all the yeah. data, and then filtering it. Um, uh, but yeah, like let's make it work again because okay. the other web pages yeah. can also get an update on like the code. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, send me the issue. Put on the stuff that people are blocked, uh, and, and I'll. Okay. Do it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions for Hugo? That's good. Okay. Let's go next, Bashko. Hello. Uh, so last week uh, I continued with the IPNS PR. Uh, basically, I added the uh, seconds precision, uh, the key parameter for publish, and the recursive parameter for resolve. 
Uh, in this context, I also released the initial version of GSIPNS. Um, then uh, I also, regarding IPNS, I also created a PR for the IPNS specs in the specs repo. There are some missing points there I will try to write uh, in this week or in the following ones. Uh, then I created several PRs for changing the Lodash imports in some lib peer to peer modules. Uh, I renamed uh, GS lib peer to peer railing to lib peer to peer bootstrap. And I, I also uh, got some time for thinking about uh, OKRs for lib peer to peer. Uh, for, I'm not blocked in anything. And for the next week, I want to get a final PR of uh, IPNS working locally for uh, reviewing. Basically, now I need to, f I need to finish uh, some remaining optional parameters, uh, going through the logging and errors refactor, finish some tests and uh, add uh, LRU cache. Uh, then uh, continue the, IPN, the IPNS spec and help phrasing the peer to peer OKRs. It's basically that. Cool. So, uh, are there interrupt tests right now? Uh, I made uh, manual in interrupt tests because, uh, as uh, I don't have uh, the routing right now, I don't know if I can have like a way to communicate between them. I think I think maybe I can use the CTL, but uh, I didn't try it yet. Yeah. So the I, I understand the. Um, the corrects there. It's actually because like they will not like change the IPNS record, but what you can do is like publish in GoIPFS and then like turn it off and then like spin the daemon of GCPFS over the GoIPFS repo and like read that record. Like it should be able to like, so the, the repo is also an interrupt point. It's not just the wire, it's also the repo. Uh, and so if GCPFS is writing a record, like GoIPFS should be able to read that from the same repo and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, I, try, I tried like the manual way, copying the entire repo content from one to another, and it didn't work that way, but I will try with the CTL. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you could point me at something that I can review and, and give you help with, uh, it should work. Uh, okay. The other thing is like getting the names over PubSub should also actually be quite simple, uh, given the, the pieces that are there. Uh, you, yeah. you might want to prioritize believe, that. Yeah. yeah, I believe that both uh, uh, adding the DHT and uh, PubSub will not be that complicated. I, I wrote the code some, somehow based in the Go implementation, and I thought about uh, several uh, use cases of the other routings, and probably I think it will be easy. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's exciting. Get a IPNS uh, working on JSABFS. Cool. Any questions for Vasco? Okay. So Diogo is next, and I have to run to open the door. And I'll take 15 seconds, but I'll continue listening, and I'll I'll, I'll follow up when I get back here to share. But Diogo, you can go. Okay. <laughs> That's not for me. Hey guys. Um, well, I just I'm just popping in because my my goals from, from last week and this week are from another working group. But I just didn't know if there was going to be some kind of retrospect in this call, so I just came here to see that, but apparently not. <laughs> but yeah, I've been working in the web UI group and uh, the companion did a bunch of public lights and see the then a bunch of reviews too, to check the current work. And this week I'm going to implement the Pierce page. Hopefully to be demoed in the Berlin with people. That's about it. I just just popping in to see if there was some retrospective. Yeah. Sounds good. So uh, it seems like you already fully shifted your focus to like in web browsers work slash we work. Uh, it's cool to get these updates here, of course, uh, but like probably now the right venue is on the web browser's call. Uh, that happens right before the IPFS all ends. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, been, I've been checking in there too. I just came here to just to, to rock solid to make sure that I wasn't missing. So, yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. I, and of course, like just there will always be parts of IPFS from just IPFS, just a peer to peer. Yeah. And, and, but but uh, I'm just saying that like, it is important for these updates to be shared with 
uh, home so that they are up to date. Okay, cool. Uh, just to just to be clear, my left me to to ask you this. Uh, my main focus is now on the other working group because we were planning to work for this week, and I didn't know if I still had to do something. Just to say. So, so I, I heard some background noise. I know everyone understand. Basically, Diogo, I think Diogo just explained that like he's now going to focus more on web browsers and web UI rather than just IPFS core. Um, and so his objectives and key results will be more focused towards that working group work. Um, cool. All right. Thanks. Any questions for Diogo? I don't see any hands. Let's go to Gar. Hello. Uh, last week, I um, made uh, a little pull request to start the conversation about speeding up some CLI tests in JS IPFS. Um, most of them just use one instance in a shared library, and I've made it reuse the IPFS instance. Uh, it's promising. Uh, the tests all work for me locally, randomly fail remotely, and I'm still trying to work out if that's a real problem or not. I've also got all the code mostly in place for the BitSwap ledger, I'm kind of waiting on a cascade of PRs now that need to fall that start back in JS peer ID to change the to print output. Then I'll need to implement that in BitSwap, and I'm gonna tweak its output a little so that there's less code I have to make in the other three repos. Um, so it's just kind of feeding back what it provides rather than trying to do this weird translation. Um, so that's what I got done last week. Next is hopefully finishing the BitSwap ledger stuff and uh, working on these CLI tests. And I'm also going to start looking into the IPFS BitSwap reprovide implementation, which if I can land that, when, when that lands, I mean, obviously I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it, um, that'll mean the implementation for IPFS BitSwap will be all green on the implementation stuff, CLI, HTTP, and interface. And that's me. Sweet, thank you. Uh, I can unblock you pretty quickly on the two print. Uh, I'll do that after this call. Um, really Thanks. It was just a timing thing where my PR worked and there was a hiccup in the, in the, in the um, tests and so the reply was, can you get the tests? And I reran them and they worked and now we're just waiting on the merge. So. Got it, got it. Um, Cool. Uh, the, on the, um, just like a, a, a word of caution, because like on the IPFS BitSwap repro, right? Uh, you will be able to implement like the HTTP endpoint. You will be able to implement the command. You even will be able to implement like just the function in just IPFS 4, but the full functionality will never be complete until the VHT exists. Because BitSwap repro, right, is basically like telling the whole world, hey, I still have this block. And so because DHT is not like by default on just IPFS, uh, like the, the full functionality, like passing whole, the whole tests will not be possible. Nevertheless, there is a, like this like 80% of the work, which is just like wiring the things together, CLI, HTTP, PI core, so that like when that final step in BitSwap is done, you can get the right functionality out of it. Sorry, I was muted. That last step is, is not where the bulk of the work is, so maybe I'll just uh, skip ahead to something else, because we can just wait on the other to be implemented. Because yeah. the, the hooking it up in all the other repos can happen later. It, it's not worth putting the cart before or the horse on that one. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 heads it up. Might, might be better to just like pick another endpoint to, to go after right now as well. You're right. Cool. Um, all right, any questions for Gar? I don't see hands. Okay, next up we have Alex. We, we is not here anymore. Or did I? Oh, my bad. <laughs> Alex, I'm so sorry. Like, I thought you were here, but apparently you left, and then I, I didn't see that I had to click accept for you to join the call. So you have been waiting for 26 minutes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, you will have to watch the recording because my bad. Um, you just joined for your update. Are, are you ready? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do my update. Uh, to be honest, I just had it all in the background. It was just kind of a really, really tinny noise. Uh, but yeah, fine. Uh, so my update is 
Uh, so I've been doing lots of little bits and pieces on this, on lots of little libraries so that it just makes debugging stuff easier because trying to work out like all the interrupt stuff between Go and JS is super painful. Um, so just trying to like, you know, see what's going on inside of these processes. Uh, so that I've also been working on the NPM on IPFS project. So kind of resurrected that found that, you know, everything has changed since then. This was last uh, written. So updating it all, trying to get the test to pass. Uh, that's still ongoing. Um, I've got some uh, blockers in the, uh, yeah, like trying to request data from, from Go IPFS and it has some weird encoding that, that can trip up uh, JSON parser. So you kind of get invalid data back. So I had, I've created a PR on Go that lets you specify, please give me this data in base 64 or, or whatever. Um, and that's kind of rolling along, but it's going to need to be merged before we can have really reliable uh, tests until or, and either that or until we get the dagger API finished in JavaScript because uh, we can't make the same queries uh, that we can on Go. Um, yes, that's mostly going to be me. So I'm going to be so ours just dropped his enormous uh, refactor of how the interface tests work. Uh, it's much better now, um, but obviously now I need to refactor all my stuff as well. Uh, so I hope I'm um, almost finished that. I uh, should be able to push something up hopefully later today. Um, before I go home. I uh, really like to merge MFS. Uh, I've got some outstanding interrupt tests. Gonna try and get those in as well. Uh, and then if there's any time left in the week, I'm gonna continue with the NPM on my FPS. Uh, got it, thank you. Uh, and again, sorry for like just <laughs> waiting you wait. A uh, couple of questions. So first, um, is this objective, objective, object API endpoint uh, bug? related with MFS slash NPM on IPFS work? Like, is it this needed to, to make it work or is this uh, another work? It's for, the, it's for the interrupt test. It's for the interrupt test. Oh, for the, for the object API, not for, or are you saying for testing, for the interrupt test of MFS, you use the object API? Exactly. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh, Interesting, okay, so uh, makes sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to steal some of Steven's review the PR then <laughs> cool. and go through but, but as always like things in go like might be merged but then they take time to release and it can go for weeks so if you find a clever way to do it between the DAG API and the object API or some like if you if you find a way to just like switch the values like format the values as you need them uh, like do a shim uh, it might be the best way so that you are not blocked for another four weeks or something. Okay, mm -hmm. that's released. Um, yeah, so that's there and yeah, okay, it was just one question or one one point. That's two. Cool. Thank you so much. Any questions for Alex from everyone? All right, we are right on time. Um, I'll just uh, ask one last question which is uh, actually two last questions. First, we have some people that didn't get to speak so far, like Machi, Michael, and Travis. Do you guys want to, do you have any question for the group, any update you'd like to share? Sure, sure, I can go. Um, so yeah, I've been getting uh, all of the GitHub archive data in the IPFS. Um, I'm now at the point where that graph actually builds. Um, and what's starting to build is going to take forever. But um, I wrote up sort of what I had to do to make the performance work to build graphs this size. So that's a thread on JSIPFS that people might want to check out uh, if you're interested. Um, and I'll continue to update that. The kind of next steps for that are talking to Infra about how we host and that. Um, and starting to think also about um, how to build up sort of a shadow graph for MapReduce, uh, for like a stored MapReduce to kind of do queries on it. Um, anyway, so that's that project. There's also just a couple modules that might be interesting or useful to people that I wrote um, while I was waiting for that graph to build, because <laughs> there's nothing else to do. Um, so uh, there's uh, DAG Seabor Sync. So they're just synchronous serialization um, and deserialization for Seabor. Um, because the current implementation is callback and it was just getting kind of annoying. And then there's one called DAG Seaboard Links, which you can give it a DAG Seaboard node and it'll return you a generator that gives the paths and CIDs for every link in the node. Um, and uh, I wrote a quick draft or implementation of the UnixFSV2 draft 
Um, so that's also um, a repo that I can post a link to. Um, so yeah, it, it just takes like any directory and recursively will package it up and, and return you an async generator that has every block in it. Um, and there's also a reader where you give it a root node and, it, and how to get blocks and then it'll also serve up the content. So that's it. That's all cool stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, so I know that a lot of these links are shared on the thread that you open about IPLV. If you want to put it on the notes for this call, uh, you're also welcome to. Like you can just like follow the template and like add all the links on the down, cool. down section. Uh, cool. Any questions for Michael with regards to all the things he shared? All right. I, I know some people here already interacted with you over the issue. Cool. Thank you. What what's up? Awesome stuff coming uh, very quickly. Uh, that's good. Matchy and Travis, do you have any other things to share? Uh, sure. Uh, sorry, I, I completely missed the time change. Uh, I thought it was 10. Anyways, uh, <laughs> last week I um, I opened up a uh, an issue on the uh, interface IPFS core testing uh, about ways we can go through and help uh, standardize some of the testing to try to bring things in line from some older tests, some newer tests that builds off the work that uh, Alan just did to allow consumers of those tests to kind of pick and choose how they, what, you know, what tests they want to run and if they want to skip things. Um, so if you have any feedback on, on test format or how we should be writing tests uh, in, in that repository, could take a look. Um, I know Alan's going to kind of jump into it, but if anyone else, anyone else wants to provide some feedback, uh, the more the better. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, if you could add this uh, link also to the notes, I think it's a good place for everyone to find it. Um, and yeah, thank you for writing. I, yeah, thank you for doing that research and, and writing all the notes down. Cool. Uh, any questions for Travis on this? Did people already read through that issue? I see some heads nodding. Oh, they're not. Okay, cool. So then now we have the, the, the link to, the, to it. Machi, do you have anything? Um, I created a PR on AGIA that adds um, the module really required. It basically just checks if um, a dependency is uh, defined in a package JSON, if it's required in the source code. Cool, cool, cool. So you're checking if uh, we are installing dependencies that we actually don't use. Um, yes, and uh, the PR is still open for that. Okay, okay. Cool, all right. Um, Okay, so I know we are four minutes over. Just like one last question. Should we use, uh, and, and like just give me thumbs up or thumbs down. Should we use prepilot for the sessions and like stress test it or like our more better dog footed? Yes or no? Like, do you want to use prepilot? Do you feel confident that prepilot will serve as well? <laughs> I see some, yes, I know, it's okay. So even if it breaks, we will have a lot of feedback both for the developers of prepilot and for us as developers of IPFS. Um, cool, okay, next one we'll start with the peer path uh, and we will figure out persistency after. All right, thank you so much. Any last remarks? Does everyone feel that they know what they have to do this week? Uh, of course, there's a lot of like OKR discussions happening. People are still like defining their goals for this quarter, um, but there's a, a lot of issues open, a lot of pull requests on the fly. Is everyone convinced, like excited? Ready? All right, cool, sweet. Uh, so see you all on interwebs. Thank you so much for coming to this weekly thing. See you all here next week. Bye-bye everyone. Bye.